Question number 151. The intercalating agent that stacks between base pairs of DNA and helps in visualizing them under UV light is and the options are methylene blue, bromophenol blue, ethidium bromide and the last option given is aniline blue. Now ethidium bromide or ETBR or bromoethane help in visualizing DNA under UV light. So the correct answer to this question is option number 3. Ethidium bromide is an intercalating agent that stacks between base pairs of DNA and helps in visualizing them under UV light. Let's discuss rest of the options. Option number 1 methylene blue and option number 2 bromophenol blue cannot be the correct answer because these are tracking dyes. These are tracking dyes that makes it easier to load the sample and visually track the migration of DNA through gel in gel electrophoresis. And the last option given is aniline blue and this cannot be a correct answer to our question. Aniline blue used as a biological dye to stain glycogen and cell organelles that appears yellow green in color under UV light. So the correct answer to this question is option number 3. Let's discuss our next question. Question number 152. Select the incorrect statement with respect to ELISA. ELISA or enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. The very first statement given is, it is based on the principle of antigen-antibody interactions. And as it is a correct statement, this cannot be a correct answer to our question because ELISA is based on the principle of antigen-antibody interaction. The next statement given is, Peroxidase is used in ELISA and as it is also a correct statement, this cannot be a correct answer to our question. Peroxidase catalyzes the reduction of hydrogen peroxide to water in ELISA. The next statement is ELISA detects presence of antibodies synthesized against the pathogen and as it is also a correct statement, this cannot be a correct answer to our question. As ELISA is based on antigen-antibody interactions, this test can detect presence of antibodies synthesized against the pathogen. Now the last statement given is it is used to detect mutations in genes of only suspected cancer patients and as it is an incorrect statement this is a correct answer to our question because ELISA can be used as a diagnostic test for various diseases or disorders like AIDS, hepatitis etc. So it can detect or diagnose AIDS, hepatitis, etc. So the correct answer to this question is option number 4. Let's discuss our next question. Question number 153. PCR technique using TAC enables directly the blank A of billions of copies of an original piece of blank B in a test tube within minutes. Select the option which fills the blanks A and B correctly. In the very first option, A is synthesis and B is RNA and this is an incorrect option because PCR or polymerase chain reaction uses TAC DNA polymerase that enables directly the amplification of billions of copies of an original piece of DNA. So blank A should be amplification and blank B should be DNA. So the correct answer to this question is option number 2, A amplification and B DNA. And this PCR technique is used to amplify DNA in a test tube within minutes or days. The next option given is A synthesis and B protein and this cannot be a correct answer because it is used to amplify DNA fragments. And in the last option, A is amplification and B is protein. And this is also an incorrect option as the template or the product of PCR is DNA molecule. So the correct answer to this question is option number 2. Let's discuss our next question. Question number 154. Absence of beta-galactosidase activity 
in recombinant PUC8 is. Options given are observed in blue colonies with intact ampicillin resistance gene. Second option, observed in blue colonies with the disrupted ampicillin resistance gene. Third option given is observed in white colonies with intact ampicillin resistance gene. And the last option given is observed white colonies with inactivated ampicillin resistance gene. Suppose this is your PUC8 vector. This is your ampicillin resistance gene. And this is leg Z gene which codes for beta galactosidase activity. All right. Now, if this foreign DNA or any gene of interest is inserted within the coding sequence of this beta-galactosidase enzyme, that is within leg Z gene, this will lead to insertional inactivation insertional inactivation of this gene and eventually producing white colonies. So, these white colonies will be formed by recombinant bacteria. Whereas, if this gene of interest gets inserted outside Laxer gene or if the plasmid won't have any insert, this will lead to the formation of blue colonies or non-recombinant colonies. Whereas, ampicillin resistance gene remains intact in both recombinant as well as non-recombinant colonies. Now, let's discuss the options. Very first option is observed in blue colonies with intact ampicillin resistance gene. And this is incorrect because absence of beta-galactosidase activity due to insertional inactivation of leg Z gene is present in white colonies and not in blue colonies. Next option is observed in blue colonies with the disrupted ampicillin resistance gene. This is an incorrect option because absence of beta-galactosidase activity is observed in white colonies with intact ampicillin resistance gene. The next option is observed in white colonies, yes, with intact ampicillin resistance gene. Absolutely true and this is a correct answer to our question. And the last option given is observed white colonies with inactivated ampicillin resistance gene. This is also an incorrect option because due to insertion inactivation, only Lexer gene gets inactivated. Whereas ampicillin resistance gene remains intact in both white colonies or recombinant colonies or in blue colonies or non-recombinant colonies. So the correct answer to this question is option number 3. Let's discuss our next question. Question number 155, stirrer in stirred tank bioreactor has been designed for and the options are formation of the substrate, ensuring anaerobic conditions in culture vessel, addition of preservatives to the product and the last option given is increasing availability of oxygen throughout the process. Now the very first option given is formation of the substrate and this is an incorrect option Bioreactors are vessels in which substrate are converted into specific products. There is no formation of substrate. So, this is an incorrect option. The next option is ensuring anaerobic conditions in culture vessel. And this is an incorrect option because it ensures aerobic conditions in culture vessel. The next option is addition of preservatives to the product. And this is also an incorrect option. Stirrer has not been designed for addition of preservatives to the product. And the last option is increasing availability of oxygen throughout the process. And as it is a correct option, this is a correct answer to our question. Stirrer in stirred tank bioreactor has been designed for even mixing and increasing. availability of oxygen throughout the process. So, the correct answer to this question is option number 4. Let's discuss our next question. 